All right, so now that we've got that ready, we can turn this back around, these guys back around. We don't need to show that, but we'll have you quickly do that. Mm -hmm. And I've got some shielded wire. And the nice thing about shielded wiring, you especially want to use it on inputs or any sensitive connections that are going, you know, from A to B that might inherit noise, is that it has a, a um, the wire has a mesh of braided wire around the outside of it. It'll come out when you pull the other one out. All right. Um, the, it covers the whole thing and accepts any noise into it first because it's kind of the first layer of defense. You then ground that shielded wire, and that means that that grounded noise just dissipates off into ground instead of going into the input signal somewhere. So that's why ground wire is good. Ground. All right. Okay, I bought a cool new tool that makes stripping these super easy. So dun, dun, dun. you just basically put, you squeeze this up. Is it on camera up here? I don't know. You squeeze this up and you want to put this through about as far, we want a little extra of that. Cause what it does is it cuts two cuts that are fairly short and strips away all of the extension, uh, the, all of it on this right side, all the way down to the inner sheath. Okay. But then it only strips the outer sheath on the a smaller segment on the left side. So we want a little bit extra of that end piece. So you kind of want to put this through where a little bit will be sticking out. And then you're going to spin it around one way and then the other way and then pull it. It should just pull off that stuff. So go yeah, ahead and watch you do that. All right, I'll give it a try. So <laughs> like I said, I'm intentionally leaving some extra sticking out here because I want a lot extra there. So you can kind of hear, I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but that's it kind of cutting through the sheathing. And then once we're done, we just, so now if you look, oh, it actually didn't totally kill all of the, wires there's a few of those here but that's okay we can cut them well we can actually make them a part of what we want to solder so what we'll do now is we also need to strip back just a teeny bit of this because that's what we will solder into there and then we're going to connect a grounding to this and bring that over to the same ground that we had over here so um or actually i'm sorry we we're going to create a ground bus. bus we want to create a grounding bus now so the grounding bus was yeah there it is goes between, um, it will connect into the same grounding tip, which we've soldered, but that's okay because we can Oops. flow it a little bit. I, right. I forgot we needed to have that out. So it's going to be on input jack one right there. So we'll connect it to that, which is going to come over to this one as well, but we can also then connect this and put a small piece of wire on this and connect it to that grounding bus as well. So before we do anything else, let's go ahead and actually connect that grounding bus correctly. You can just kind of reflow that hole and put that wire in. As long as it connects through enough, you'll be good to go. And I would use pliers because you do not want to be holding a bare wire that is touching a soldering iron, or you will melt your fingers very, very well. I know. You said something because I don't think about that. Oh, uh -huh. sorry. <laughs> so effectively, just kind of flow that and just put a little bit of that. I, I, this is where I usually use my left hand, or if you want to come all the way over here, you do not want to touch the actual resistor with the tip, or you will end up doing some harm to the tip, so, or to the resistor in theory. Now I need to hold as still as possible until that dries out or I will create that same fracture I was talking about. It's still shining. I can see it shining. And I think we'd cool off. So that was intentional. I stayed as still as possible. If for some reason you find that you moved a little, sometimes it's best to leave it alone and connect the other things because then the wire is pretty solid and not moving. And then you can just reflow that spot to get it nice and, and fresh. But I think I held it pretty safe. What we want to do now is because we've got this this guy set up okay. is we're going to um, get a small piece of um, ground wire we're gonna you're gonna solder let me just try to do this you're gonna solder that piece of wire to that sheathing that's sitting around it so that we get a good ground connection. Okay. I don't think I'm doing a good job of this at all. I feel like it's 
going around the sheeting, but it's not staying on the wire at all. So I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here. Yeah, see, I'm dripping this crap in on the bottom. It's not wanting to stick to the wire. So I'm getting a bunch on the bottom. It's like dripping down below, but it's not staying on the wire at all. So I got took some off, but I'm not I need a wet the tip. Okay, so if you can see that, I quickly just re resoldered it. We had to cut it. It was really melting for some reason. But I've gone and quickly connected it. Oh, gosh. So I went and re um, <laughs> reflowed this myself. I'm actually going to, this is, I'm going to show everybody a, a trick on how to test your continuity is good. So what we want to do <laughs> is not lose at the stripping a wire game. All right, so we're going to put this in continuity mode. And we're going to test to make sure that we can touch this end here where it's not the actual wire. I have to look for the wire and see where it's soldered. So I want to touch the sheathing and then touch here. So we're getting good connection. There's a little resistance because I'm not getting an angle. I think there's some flux in it, but like if I, you want to do me a favor? Yeah. I want you to touch that to the end while I just okay. push a really good connection here. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, perfect. So, that means, since I don't know how to hold a wire. All right, so then what we're going to do is we're going to slide this sheath that I have here. Uh, is it in the camera there? I don't know where the camera is. I'm trying to fix this. It just came unwound. So, okay. we're going to roll this. Now I've got some heat shrink that I want to bring up past that grounding connection so that it's covered and can't accidentally touch anything. We will heat shrink it and then we can bend this ground out of the way enough to connect this into our um, inputs. And then we will measure a distance of this guy over to come across to the this first input tube and plug it in and then wire it into the uh, same thing. And we'll have to have a small amount of this shrink tube as well for that. So we'll, right. we'll do that also. Um, so let me go, we'll break for a second because I just realized I don't have any of the shrink tubing up here or my little heater thing. So we have that. Okay, so now we've got the other end cut and measured to the distance we want it to fit. I've got another piece of shrink tube, and you can see that there's that bare grounding wire. We don't need it, so we're going to put up the shrink tube up above it. And we've got a small amount of the wire that's visible that we will um, be able to use. But now she's going to get that and sh this and, and shrink that tip down. You have to pull the trigger on your thumb. Aha. And you have to hold it. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. And you don't want to leave the heat too long or you'll melt things that you don't want to melt, but... Is that shrinking? It is, yep. So I need to turn it? Do yeah, you're going to need to rotate it and kind of get the other side as well. But you've done it enough now that it should hold still for you. And then we'll repeat that same street shrinking for the back end as well. Now just slide your fingers back and go all the way back. Perfect, now to repeat this process the other end. Yep, and now do the other end. All right, your thing doesn't want to turn off. There it goes. It just takes it, now make sure that's, oh, that's still perfect, pretty much. Okay. All right, beautiful. It just takes it a second to kind of stop here. I'll hold it while you're... Okay. Oh, All right. Came unwound again. That's okay. So now we've got that sh shrunk. We can actually grab here and bend that away. Okay. And then you just want to try and wind that up tight so that the wires stick together. It's a, this is a braided center core. All right. Another test I forgot that we should always do is make sure of two things that you have continuity from one braided end to the other and that you don't have any continuity from the ground to the braid from either end as well. So effectively, and it's effectively sorry you hold that okay. to that end good now keep holding it I don't want 
that is fail. Okay. So, as you saw, when we tested with the multimeter, we had it bad. And what I did is I did something a little different that I've done. I was trying something that somebody explained to me before and it just didn't work. But I usually will strip a bit further back and then gently peel back all of the excess wires so that I can wind them up. So I did that and then soldered it and everything worked out fine. And she's going to connect this to here and then we'll connect the ground afterwards over to this grounding bus that will also connect to our um, main power or our main volume. And then we will run a ground from it down probably to this one as well, but we'll get to that point in a minute. So she's going to go ahead. We'll turn the fan on. And we already tested the indeed yes, the ground. Yes, uh, although it won't hurt for us to show that here. So the continuity between the two ends is working very well. But between either end and ground, nothing. And you do want to kind of check all ends, but nothing. So <clears throat> this is now correct. So our ground will cover from the shield to ground, but not from the signal, so we don't end up losing it. I'm going to take this. Yep. So she's going to take that and try and wrap it around the 68K resistors. Try and move it a little bit closer into the middle as well, if possible. That way we can clip off excess lead length. Solder that in. Mm -hmm. And also, again, sometimes what I need to I'm use. I'm going to push this down yet because now I'm going to have a better tip doing this. Sometimes it's good to just go like this. Let that harden. Then we'll bend this down and pull up that ground up and connect it to this wire somewhere about in here, just in between that and the volume. Once we get the volume in, one of the volume connection goes to the ground as well. And then we'll be able to um, finish that off. So, um, in fact, why don't you go ahead and while that's hardening and put the volume pot in. So you want the three posts kind of upward. Uh, we're going to need to break off that little tip because I don't drill the holes and a lot of people don't. If you look here, everybody, there's a small little flange that's good for locking. Uh, it's right here. You can see it. I'm kind of gripping it here. I'll turn it, try and turn it a couple different angles. I just grip this here and I break it off. It is good if you have a pre-cut chassis that already has a slight hole on the side for the alignment because that will keep it from being able to slip and rotate even if the, for some reason the nut gets a little loose. <coughs> but uh, I'll have her go ahead and put that in. Am I you taking the tab off? Oh, I was going to have you take the tab off. Uh, I don't know what I'm strong enough. It's soft metal. You just pinch it and rotate it away. It'll break off. See? Ta-da! You bet. All right. So, so those three tabs you want to be upward so you can solder into them once we get to that point. And then, did you take off the screw? No, you got to take off the screw. I don't know, I've never done one of these before, okay. so I don't know what screw you're talking about. So there's a nut, not a screw, so I used the wrong term. Okay. There are two washers on here, I believe, and you put one on either side of the thing. I see. And then also... There's a special kind of thinner washer that I've seen that, that gets used that I believe keeps it. Wait, 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 wait. See that washer? That goes in there to kind of keep it inside because these shafts are a little smaller. So that makes it fit in there a little bit better. And then this goes over that. And then you can go ahead and tighten that down. 